focused on, the, on our guest tonight. But anyways, welcome. Uh, it's, it's Wednesday, June 25th. You're watching the Convergence Report with Mike Thomas down here at the Downtown Windsor Business Accelerator at 720 Olette. Uh, we are live streamed by Nostrum Digital Media through XE's TV. Tonight on the Convergence Report, I'm going to take a little, a little look at uh, uh, Mashable's Social Media Day, which is happening this Friday, and also kind of the, you know, the kind of, you know, it's the same kind of spin. Wins cabinet sworn in. We'll take a look at that, and also, uh, I, I, you know, one election's done, another one begins. We're going to take kind of, we're kind of keep an eye on, take a look at Windsor's. I don't know if it's the mayoral race, or we're going to call it the soap opera. But we're going to take a look at that. Uh, but uh, that's what we're kind of looking at, uh, with, and also with some of the other uh, uh, local lo local flavor that happens on the Converge Report. We'll be taking a look at that at the end of the show. Uh, and do tune tune into Exe's TV this week. So you got me tonight. You got Betty Nago with Betty Goodell. Her guest is going to be Mike Haggath. Uh, that will be uh, tomorrow night on Thursday. So please tune into that. Uh, it's his first. He said second kind of live show, but first time it's been a live appearance or live streamed. So he's really looking forward to that. Uh, Beyond Incredible with Ashley Nicole, of course, on Saturday, and Jock Talk with Brett Hedges. You're, you know, so please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, it, we're, you know, YouTube, like it's, it's on the it's on the screen there. We're over 28,000 views. Live is great, but you know, if you missed the show, you want to go see the part of the show that you want to see or you want to send out, take a look at it on YouTube. Okay. Uh, and again, I just said subscribe to us on YouTube. And again, like us on Facebook. Well, not you like my personal Facebook at Mike Thomas, but for sure. Uh, like Knox Digital Media because that's where everything's posted, everything's reposted. If you want a quick link to what's happening on uh, uh, Knox Digital Media and XE's TV, go to Knox Digital Media on Facebook. Uh, my main part of my show, this is what I talk about each week. I call it Facebook Karma. Facebook Karma, and it's you know, whether, whether it's like I call it the Thought Police because we are so tuned into social media. And with social media being, I saw that it's immediate, it's on Twitter, it's on Facebook, it's on all the different aspects. And that is what really kind of leads us to uh, my guest tonight. It's going to be Dan Brown. He is the coordinator for Why and Not Windsor Essex. And he is the coordinator for what is happening this Friday, a Mashable's Social Media Day. Uh, thank, you know, thanks for coming on, Dan. Yeah, thanks for asking uh, to have me here. That's not, not, not a problem. What is happening? What is Mashable, Mashable Social Media Day? So Mashable Social Media Day is one day a year when everyone meets up uh, in person to celebrate social media as it exists uh, across the world. Uh, so typically the, the actual date is Monday. We are celebrating it uh, locally on uh, Friday tomorrow. So what we're de doing is it's a partnership between Why Not Windsor Essex that I'm coordinating, uh, We Tech Alliance, the City of Windsor, and the Arts Council of Windsor and Region. Okay, and we have a, a chalk tweet, or a chalk artist there. We'll be tweeting live, uh, inviting people down for freezies, uh, for games, and uh, and and conversing online as as well. And what is the, what is the time frame? It's on it's on the Friday, June twenty seventh. So what's the time frame? What what time do you want people to start coming down? It's from noon till five p.m. Noon to five p.m. And what are you hoping for the walkers and the and the bike riders yeah. or the people working downtown, like who do you expect? To yeah, we gave some people advance, some advance notice, so they know. So hopefully that that way they can come on their lunch break. It's also a nice day, uh, so we'll hope we're hoping to grab people who are walking down the river and bring them down. Oh, excellent. Okay, so I kind of was doing this. So what's new this year? Okay, at our social media day, like what what what's what's some of the things you have planned? Um, well, we'll be chalking. So so it, it'll be uh, the the live artists will be there, and we'll also be um, having people. T so there'll be there'll be writing in chalk and we'll be tweeting out what they write or you oh, you're, oh yeah you're gonna add to it then okay yeah because I, so, I, I did cover it a couple years ago yeah and we and we were doing i was watching the first part and i was taking the pictures and i was filming everything but then you actually take that and then and, and then and tweet it, that tweet chalk right photo okay. to others so we're, we're meeting in person and then we're inviting so even if you're not there you can still participate and you could tweet at us and we'll write that down on the chalk so oh, okay. Oh, you're reverse it then. Yeah. You, oh, you take, yeah. you take the tweets and you yeah. can oh you can mark it down too yeah so it says back to the drawing board so what's what is that all about um, that that's the the artist. So we want to have the art as well. So it's not just about tweeting. It's about you can you can draw whatever you want. Uh, it's pretty casual. We have we have uh, games. I can't think of what that game is called. When you throw, it's like it's like it's like horseshoes, but it has the two weighted oh, pieces. The ladder, ladder, ladder ball. We have ladder ball. Okay. Oh, we have ladder ball. We have freezies. We have chalk. It's going to be a good time. Oh, okay. Excellent. Okay. And so, like you're saying, this is around the world. So so what? Like how many people? So far, they participate in this from year to year to what they think. Uh, you know what? It's my first year doing this. I really don't know the stats on it. I know they do have like hundreds of cities that can register officially. Okay. So it's, it's really across the world. I couldn't tell you how many, though. Okay, very yeah. good. Okay, that sounds, that sounds like a lot of fun. What other, you know, you're to our town, what other type of events do you have upcoming? 
Yeah, the one that I've been focusing on on the most, we have, a, we have an event tomorrow called Your City, Your Ideas. So I'm, I'm happy to say we have about 85 people registered. Oh, very good. And we're bringing in uh, young people. We're young, young we define as uh, uh, 19 to 39. Okay. Um, so you're, <laughs> you're, still, you're still in the bracket. <laughs> well, thank yeah. you very much. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm going to take that. Yeah, yeah. We're, coming to, we're going to the, uh, the news cafe, the Windsor Star News Cafe, from 6 to 8 p.m. And it's a, it's a public conversation. We want to know what young people want and what it would take to see more young people living in the area. So I'll show you. I have my little topics here. Okay, yep. Uh, we have a couple of speakers from the community to kind of set up the discussions, and we have the, them around the five, five basic topics here. So the first one is opportunities for young people. Like I said, young is uh, 19 to 39. Okay. Also, integrating the college and university with the community. So what can, what can the college and university do better so that people have opportunities outside of that life? Okay. Uh, downtown life is a whole separate one. Young young people tend to want to live in a downtown core, and that's a very important part of, of attracting that talent. And, and, and it, it, but even for the people, like a lot of discussion going around having uh, the services that are needed to support everybody being downtown. Yeah, exactly, right? exactly. Yes. So we define, they're very broad. They're broad. Uh, so this public transit, uh, just because um, young people especially, you might be coming out of school and not afford a car, and you that, might rely heavily on public transit. Also, that tends to be a, a really... Uh, important thing. Uh, if well, we, we, we take it. What well, it comes up in conversations again. It'll probably come a conversation that day where where um, where ha owning a vehicle, no matter what type of vehicle you had, uh, was an automatic a number of right, years ago. Right. Okay, now it's kind of becoming a luxury for some. So public transit. Right. So it's important. So very important. Right. Because a lot of people they might rent downtown and rely on public transit, especially if they're in that younger age. Um, so those are really key issues. And the last one we have is cross border partnerships. We are called Why Not Windsor Essex, um, but. We don't believe we should hog everything to ourselves. We really want to reach out across the border. Um, I'm excited that a young person named Jay Rayford is going to be joining us. He's a, he's a citizen there. And a lot of cool pe like young people are making cool things happen over there. So we really want to work together. Um, and we believe that you can live here and work there. Or, you know, can, can we say, can we say like it's like rebuilding the partnerships? Exactly. Because yeah. I think we had that for years and years. And I don't know what heck there was coming. Maybe it was 9/11. 9/11 was man. really kind of put a stall. To yeah, yeah. We I, I was thinking about that the other day. I think we really still feel the impact of 9/11. Um, and I'm happy to say that the young people are kind of we're ready to. I feel like we're ready to move on from okay. that. Okay. Oh, well, very good. Yeah. No, that no, it's very positive. So again, this is tomorrow night. Okay, June 26th yeah. at yeah. the at this the, Win, the Windsor. What's it called? The uh, Star Cafe. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, from what time to what time? 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. And if you wanted to register, could you still register? Is it event right? You, we have a wait list now. Uh, we are, it is full. You could check out the site and join the wait list. It's uh, www.yourcityyourideas.eventbrite.ca. Okay. And uh, come check it out. Uh, we also will be using the hashtag YCYI throughout the night. So you can YCY. check out our, our Facebook page for Why Not. Um, Pathway to Potential will be there. We have some great speakers. I'm looking forward to it. Oh, excellent. You know, thanks very much for being here. Okay, uh, this is the virtual board with Mike Thomas, with our special guest, uh, Dan Brown, and we are going to be back right after this with more Ontario politics. You're watching Taxis TV stream live for downtown Windsor for the Windsor downtown is a slayer. This is a converged report with Mike Thomas. We'll be right back. Okay, and we're back. You are watching the Converge Report. And again, just showing you some good things happening in Windsor Essex with uh, Why Not We um, and, and, and We Tech. And, and again, they have the cafe tomorrow night. There's a waiting list, but do kind of follow. You can still follow that on social media. And of course, please come out to the, I'll go back for a second, to the social media day. It's on Friday. It's down by the river. Uh, okay, right there, uh, Windsor Sculpture Park. It looks like a lot of fun for everybody. And if you're trying to, again, follow social media, and you can follow on social media or you can participate on social media, uh, with, with, and they'll tweet out what you got to say. And please retweet and mis make this explode, okay, for, uh, again, Mashable's social media day with why 
not, uh, why not we tweet it? Hashtag SM Day. Okay, Friday, the twenty seventh. Um, and and to me, you know, I keep kind of following, and it's and you know, I kind of get the news releases, I get the information, and really, it's it was the big deal. It is a majority. Uh, you know, it was they were sworn in uh, yesterday on the twenty fourth. Uh, her new cabinet. I'm not going to go through all the names. Uh, Charles Sousa, really, he's the finance minister. That's the big player on whether or not they, they do kind of allude to the fact that they're just going to resubmit uh, pretty well the same budget. I guess we'll hear the uh, the kicking and screaming of whether or not it's the same budget or whether or not they tweaked it now because they have a majority. But I guess we'll see what uh, Mr. Sousa has to present uh, very shortly. Uh, again, the same thing, building new transit, highways, roads, and bridges. Uh, Glenn Murray becomes the Minister of the Environment and Climate Change and Transparency. That's, again, another commitment uh, by, by, uh, by Kathleen or Premier Wynn. We'll call Premier Wynn now. And so very, very, again, important. Uh, I kind of keep doing the same thing. I, you know, because let's see if she follows through with what she said. She's not going to forget about Windsor. I kind of do the Kathleen Wynn. Theresa Peru's I got an outlook there. We'll talk about that in a minute in regards to the importance of the city of Windsor uh, and with the Liberal Ontario Liberal government. And of course, uh, you know, because we kind of locked out here as far as NDP seats, and you know, then you got a, you got basically you got Rick Nichols a Tory up in Chatham Kent. So really, will they come down here past uh, uh, into southwestern Ontario? And of course, I get the quote. I took it right from the immediate release that was given to me. I am grateful for the trust that the people of this province have placed in our government. We will work hard every day to build Ontario up, to create new opportunities for people, and to ensure a more secure future. And as right from Kathleen Wynne, Premier of Ontario, and as far as developing links, the quick facts that they kind of threw on uh, with uh, Kathleen Wynne, there are now 23 ministries in the Ontario government. Kathleen Wynne is the Ontario's first elected female Premier. Eight members of the Cabinet are also women. And the cabinet now features four new members. So that it is. It is happening. It is. It has begun. The majority has begun for the Liberal government. And let's see if they keep their promises. I guess that's up to uh, um, Percy Hatfield, Taras Natashak, and Lisa Gretzky to keep an eye on them as far as we are provincially. So let's make sure. And, and then as we're going to talk about a little bit more and more, it's going to be extremely significant Okay, when it comes to seeing who's going to be the new mayor of Windsor. We're going to take a kind of a little look on that. But just because of some of it, there was news, there was announcements, there was all kinds of crazy things happening as far as that particular race. And here it's really began to kind of, to kind of tie it in. There is a great big push going on now on Twitter. Uh, it's draft Teresa Perusa for mayor of Windsor. They're really kind of pushing it um, as far as some of the comments that are being made. Like tweets already are 33 tweets to this. Following is up to 2,000, okay, and there's 229 people following this. And so there is kind of a big push to see what's going to happen with, with whether or not she will announce. Is she, is she going to think about it? Does she already kind of need a break? If she not, wasn't ready to make this decision this quickly because there's a lot of things happening behind the scenes and people are trying to figure out what, who's who and what's who's doing as far as going forward. And we're going to, we're, we'll take a harder look at, or a closer look at that in a second. But you basically have, it says, uh, draft Teresa Perusa. This was draft Teresa Perusa P., Thank you for all your support thus far. We haven't heard no from her, but let's keep support rolling as she decides. Uh, a resounding yes from our community so far. Send her a tweet to show your support. Okay. Uh, lots of buzz around Teresa and the local media today. This piece is our favorite. And it was like an article from the blog in the Windsor Star. And, of course, and if she's elected, she'd be the second female mayor of Windsor. The first was Elizabeth, Elizabeth Kishkon in 1985. So, again, great big push going on right now. Uh, to get uh, Teresa Perusa to put her name forward. And a lot of people are putting that together, being, okay, well, you've done this as far as your MPPs ago, but if you have a former Liberal cabinet member as your mayor, okay, does that carry a little bit of weight going forward? And, and again, for some of the things that Windsor still needs, as we are hurting as a city in regards to unemployment uh, and some of the youth issues, as I was talking, we're talking about with, with Dan Brown, as far as trying to find solutions, okay, to, to, to get our the youth working to get the youth and again it's not when we're talking about youth he nailed it put it right there okay we have we seem to have a generation of struggle on uh, their 19 to 39 and we're trying to give them some hope and we need a mayor that can fulfill okay or, or fulfill some of that hope and, and come up with some ideas to get Windsor going again uh, 
And this is really what my bigger story is going to be. I kind of played around. And, you know, it might originally look like that. I kind of use the same slides all the time, but I, it's really not true. Um, and here, I, I put it right in the center. I know if my, if my producer, Alex, is going to look. Okay, I little pun on words there. Right, take a look at it. There's Eddie Francis, WF. See you later. How do you like that? Hey, WF, Windsor Family, see you later, because he's moving on to Windsor Family Credit Union. But he's not done yet, right? He's not done yet. He keeps on he keeps on talking. It started with, of case, I got my X's. I'm going to try to just do this all in logical order and try to pull it together. We see Fluvio Valentinus. Okay, he's actually, he made a big announcement that he's not running anymore. He's not, he's, whether he, I don't, I, what, he, you know, doesn't want to be mayor, doesn't want to be council. Uh, fulfilled the, he fulfilled his uh, role to the community. And so he's moving on. So I got him with a big X. Um, and the big X is not for Mer Mer Bill Merritt or Bill Mara. He's just decided not to run for mayor. That was already out there. And that has caused quite a stir in regards to the he said, she said, which seems to happen in this, I call it the soap opera, because he made some statements in regards to, jeez, uh, he made the stem. I'm just trying to make sure I get the first part. Oh, he takes a shot. First it was, yeah, both times it, both times it was the mayor, but Bill Maher basically said the next mayor has to be inclusive of all members of council. We need a mayor who can set aside personal agendas. It's a tense dynamic, dynamic at times you don't have to, if you don't agree with the mayor. And then that brought out, of course, that brought out uh, uh, Francis uh, taking, like say, what did he do now? He ended up taking the podium Ooh, at the Windsor Essex Economic Development Corporation, and all of a sudden he got caught. Not caught; it was there. They, they, they filmed it. They kind of took a look at it. They took a look at it, and they, they let him. They let him. They let him. I'm going to say I'm sorry. They let him rant on, saying, "You know what? Uh, I didn't have a personal agenda. My personal agenda was for the taxpayers. My personal agenda was for the people of Windsor. And it was a, it was a majority. It was a majority vote. Everything passed. It wasn't my. It's not me. I'm not. I'm not that guy that Bill Maher says he is. Well, if you're so defensive about it, you really have to take a look at hard look at the issues. And, and really take, you know what, some of the things we were talking about, some of the struggles and problems with Windsor, you need to go back and say, take a look if, if, if take a look at the mayor. And I guess you got to take a look at council at the same time, okay, because we're not much better than we were, were since the crash. And we, and we can't keep on blaming the crash to continue to have unemployment. We can't keep on blaming the crash why a lot of good jobs are gone. And, and we, we need to really take, I'm sorry, we need to take a hard look at uh, what, what he was saying he was so good at. Okay, and I guess we're saying he was so good at it. Mayor Francis is really good at get, getting the Windsor Family Credit Union name uh, on on the on the on the, the hockey arena and on the aquatic center. So, yep, we definitely yeah, I go council too. Yeah, council too. Okay, but it, right, a lot of times you saw what was happening here is the fact that uh, if he didn't get his way, it, it he got his way eventually. It just took a while. So that was what I was kind of looking at there. So. In saying that, we're kind of looking at the rest of it. Hillary Payne is really the only one, and I went through the website today. The only one has declared that he is going to run again. Uh, Joanne Geniak, she's got a big question. You know, not question mark. The question marks are only there because what is taking so long for these people to announce that they're running? Are you going to run? Or you, what, you're too busy? Okay, you don't want to be in the news kind of yet? Or you, you can't be bothered? Or you're just, you're just such an automatic that you don't have to worry about it? So again, we have, I got to keep looking at the right camera here. We're, we're testing out our camera systems here. Okay, uh, uh, Alan Haberstadt, okay, he hasn't put his name forward yet. Uh, the, uh, who else? Uh, uh, Magnier hasn't put his name forward yet. Ron Jones hasn't put his name forward yet. Uh, even Eric Kuzmerchuk, he hasn't put his name forward yet. So what, like, what is it? Uh, Ed Sleeman hasn't done it. Are we looking at who's running? There are quite a few names that are already kind of posted. Or, or filed their papers to run and look like very legitimate candidates, um, I guess we'll go forward with this. And then I, I'll kind of look at Drew Dickens. What are you going to do? Are you now waiting for Teresa Perusa? Um, and, and, or you don't know which way you want to go? Do you want to be a, a, a lawyer slash councilman? Or do you want to go the whole route? Or are you worried about losing one or the other? It, it's about, you know, people really want to know who wants to step up and run for mayor? This has been going on. Why does Windsor always have to be so different? If you look at Toronto, there was a, a slew of candidates threw their name in that when it was time to do it. Why is Windsor got to be different? I don't understand it. I think it's kind of I think it's kind of crazy, uh, and and I guess that's why. If if anybody currently, I guess I am supporting the draft Teresa Perusa uh, uh, for mayor because maybe she you know got somebody that really wants to do the job and can learn how to work with people. And I guess that's what we're hoping for going forward in the city of Windsor. Um, I'm sorry, I'm a little bit different in how I take my spin on things. 
and how I take a hard look at it in that if you go back, what's been happening in the city of Windsor, why our unemployment levels are still the same, like I said before. Um, as far as diversifying, as far as diversifying um, our city, um, there should have been, I'm sorry, maybe there should be a little bit more battle to keep the good jobs um, in, in the city of Windsor. Regarding, and I'm sorry if they're, I'm sorry if they're auto jobs, Okay, or sorry if they were kind of skilled trade or apprenticeship type style types of jobs. I'm sorry if those things happen. If we just kind of all just think all the school, uh, <coughs> the school, the school has a lot of kids in it. Okay, but you know, really, you know, I'm sorry about as, as far as the amount of jobs that go with education. So I don't kind of look at it the same way that A. Francis is letting you know that taxes never raised up and this didn't happen and that didn't happen. Okay, and the city is so much better off since he's been there. You really take a hard look. I mean, you really need to crunch those numbers. Okay, when he leaves and goes forward to Windsor Family Credit Union you know, of the wonderful legacy that A. Francis left in Windsor. So <clears throat> that's my, uh, my slant, my rant, my personal opinion uh, going forward. Uh, and I kind of look at my dream job, and, and it's one of, our, you know, one of our big time supporters. I wanted to show this last week. And it's Windsor Business Networks. It's Nancy Saad Atessier, and again, one of our big supporters as far as you know, posting and, and being part and parcel of Knox from Digital Media and really helping us out. So I really kind of looked at it. It was said, post as a comment, the job and rate of pay you must most like to see. And there were some good comments. There were some good comments. It kind of was kind of leading into, I guess, leading into what kind of jobs that people really wanted. Um, some were kind of out there in a little bit left field. You know what? Uh, you know, I want $3,000 monthly. Well, who doesn't want $3,000 $3, monthly? And that's a home daycare owner. And then you really said, oh, I'm sorry, what you expected, what you expected job was going to be. So actually that was Leslie Ann Pingle, and she kind of apologized for that afterwards uh, and appreciated the explanation. Somebody, it's, there was a Susie S. She was administrator at $14 an hour. That's what she was hoping. Uh, we have Amy L. Uh, or Tracy L. Any jobs over 18 bucks an hour? Uh, I know that would be difficult in this area. Something with benefit because that's really what the key is. It's not sometimes like the rate of pay is kind of it's not I'm gonna say it's not critical. If you look at eighteen dollars an hour based upon really what's going to be, you're looking you're looking at about thirty six six thousand dollars, which is a decent decent money. It's decent money, okay, if you have a little bit of benefits that are included with that. So again, benefits very, very critical to people looking for employment. And mold makers, twenty, twenty five bucks an hour. Uh, that's what that's what Brian uh, P was saying. Personal support worker, retirement nursing home facility. Uh, 14 to 17 bucks an hour. That was her kind of her dream job, hoping to get one of those. And again, that's a growing industry, especially in the Windsor area. Okay, can you get your training quick enough? Can you get out there quick enough to be able to do that? Um, and then some people kind of got into it and they're taught, dealing with people, young jack of all trades, love doing hair. $14 an hour would be great if I was doing my own hair or, or, or as a hairdresser. And just some landscaping, not sure the pay. Child and youth workers, you know, there's, again, that's another real growth kind of uh, growth. Uh, not growth industry. It's there. It's there, and it needs to happen. It's got to be affordable for the, for the people that need the child care, and it's got to be decent pay, okay, to ensure quality care uh, and ensure quality care and good, decent, registered care. Uh, so that's, again, that's a challenge. It's always been a challenge as far as the, that one has been going. So, again, Windsor Business Network, we really want you to, to do Check them out on Facebook. Just check them out on www.windsorbusinessnetworks.com, and get and they are out there really trying to make a difference in the Windsor community. So really want you to take a look at them. Uh, Easter Seals, Easter Seals of Windsor uh, of Windsor Essex or Windsor Essex second annual big drop event. Um, this is going to happen on Monday, September fifteenth. And if you're kind of looking at the picture behind me, uh, you definitely have the the Easter. Uh, the, the kids for, for who are not supporting Easter sales are going to be the, um, I would say the poster, the poster kids for uh, this particular event or for Easter Easter sales uh, in the upcoming year. And then what I liked is what the actual campaign organizer, or the organizer for um, for Easter sales Windsor, David Lenz dressed up as Spider Man because the theme is I believe they're going to be super holes, superheroes. They're going to be doing the exact same thing. Um, it, it was held at Caesars, and what it was they they do that outside climb okay <laughs> of the Caesar of the Caesar building with the windows and all that and what it says uh, this the superhero spaces in the event are very limited so register online today as an individual or as a team and you can participate in the drop zone and the actual drop to kind of checked it on the website the drop zone doesn't always happen it only happen in Windsor it does happen in Ottawa London some of the other different communities that also have uh, Easter seals uh, as, as a large part of their community 
And so it happens. I think we go five, five or six committee on the actual website itself. And if you want to be part and parcel of this, if you want to put that team together, you got, got you, got, you kind of have about you need about fifteen hundred dollars in pledges in order to repel down the, the high rise building. And oh, you know what? I, I should have said Caesars. It, it was presentation with that Caesar. It's going to be they're going to announce the location down the road. So kind of keep everybody. You know, don't, people say, well, I'm not going to climb that building. You've already been registered and submitted, and then you'll find out which building you are repelling down. So that's another one uh, that's kind of happening. And I was, you know, and this is when I participated in myself. Again, this tournament here, it is the Odds for Autism. It's a golf tournament uh, that happened out at Fox Glen, and he was a Kuno Oswald, is uh, the, the key coordinator supporter of this. And what it is is that, you know, police announced that, that they raised $13,000 or over $13,000 for this very, very excellent event. Um, so it, we're there to help. And it all stays with the local chapter of Autism Ontario, which is very, very critical nowadays. Now you want to take away from, from, from the large entities, okay? But you know what? Each community, and especially the Windsor community, is struggling so much with the changes to United Way, okay, as far as what they're able to fund, or even some of the government changes with constant lo lo lobbying the government to continue funding or not to lose your funding. So our local chapter is really, really so, so very important in trying to raise money and that money that stays here. And that's what he accomplished. He said about 200 friends and family were out there golfing and supporting and volunteering and helping to make this event a huge success. And again, that's what they were trying to do going forward. Um, and here we're back here in question, whatever. But, um, and again, it's just a convergence part with Mike Thomas. And I want you, we're kind of posting up again, please. Please kind of take a look at Betty on the Go Show tomorrow at 6:30 on Thursday, uh, and the special guest is Mike Haggith, a local musician, and he can't wait. He can't wait to play live stream for you. So please check it out live at 6:30 and Beyond Incredible again at Saturday at 1 p.m. with Ashley Nicole. And again, she would is the, I believe I was, I was I was following the site. What's his name, Alex? Just give me the name, Irvin. University of Windsor. It's kind of a follow-up from her election show that she had about. Ember Bilabizar. Okay. Ember. Ember Bilabizar. Okay, gonna be back with Ashley and Shay, or just Ashley. Anyways, gonna be back with Beyond Incredible, and they're gonna kind of do their kind of analyzation of what happened that particular election. And so, you know, what get that perspective? He was, he was pretty. You know, he was pretty. He was pretty. He was right on. And, and, and the first show that he had when you were kind of looking at what was going to happen in that particular election. So it would be interesting to hear what he has to say. And, of course, we have Jock Talk with Brett, Hodge, Brett Hedges. And it's all going to stay. It's going to be here at the downtown Windsor Business Accelerator at 720 Olet. Um, and as you know, which we try to promote. You know, we want to also thank one of our other, somebody, like one of, not, not our sponsors, somebody that really supports and promotes XC's TV through, and Knox from Digital Media and all our live stream events is the huge campaign. And we had them, I think we, we had uh, we had kind of them on, or we had them, we were supporting the huge campaign and about two or three weeks ago for on the, for, which one? For anti-bullying. For anti, oh, for anti-bullying campaign. And, we, and that was on uh, Ashley Nicole's Beyond Incredible. So again, another big supporter. We want everybody to, you know, go over to their Facebook site, check out the huge campaign, and see what you can do to be part of that campaign, campaign to make it just as huge uh, uh, going forward. So, and again, remember, as far as what we need to do, it's going to be like us on Facebook. Okay, again, this, this is the Converge Report with Mike Thomas. And again, we had our special guest tonight was Dan Brown, okay, coordinator. Okay, I just got to, <laughs> and he is a coordinator of Why Not Windsor Essex. Again, another community, uh, community organization trying to make changes, trying to make good changes, okay, to Windsor Essex, trying to make things better, trying to make better for the youth. You know, to, to retain our youth, to attract other people here that can, everybody working together to make Windsor a better community going forward and growing as, you know, we must have hopefully hit the wall by now and it's time to get better. And that's also going to change with, uh, hopefully that's going to, you know, maybe have some new productive ideas, okay, or some new ideas coming forward in this, in the upcoming municipal election uh, in October, the Windsor Windsor mayor and council. So let's like let's again. I'm just kind of looking at the candidates out there. If you're going to run for mayor, come on, get that name up. Let's get the talk started. Let's find out what your platforms are going to be and what you're going to do to make Windsor better. And and I, I, I keep on saying the same thing. And for the outgoing mayor that believes he did so well, you know what? 
what what we need a little help there with that unemployment rate. We need a little help with jobs and the, you know the youth. I think it, we know it was on the. Uh, I, I didn't want. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna be my teaser for next week. I got one minute left. My teaser for next week. because I will talk about it. It was the AGM annual general meeting meeting for the United Way, United Way Central Trade Windsor. Okay, Windsor Essex, and they had the annual report on poverty and, the, and Windsor poverty or poverty. And I'm just telling you the poverty statistics in Windsor. If if we think we're doing so well. And we're, you know what, we must be living in one fine community because there's a lot of people that are hurting really bad in this particular community, and that report showed it, and I'm going to kind of review it a little bit more next week. Okay, so this has been a convergence report, and um, for Thursday, or Wednesday, uh, June 25th, and we shall see you uh, next week. Okay, live stream right here, Knox and Digital Media on XE's TV. Good night now.